Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. I swear I've been living in the Sherpa. Every time y'all see a video from me now, I have the Sherpa on, but look, it is what it is. It's super comfortable, you guys. It's from my boutique, Ebb and Flow. This is the Teddy Sherpa. It also comes in Barbie pink. This is the caramel color. As you can see from the title, today's Vlogmas video is going to be how to sign up for a resale certificate in Florida. I'm not sure how it's gonna work for other states, so definitely check your Department of Revenue's site for information on that. This is gonna to apply to Florida. I was asked by, hopefully I'm not butchering this, Coco Suave, Coco, Coco Suave, I'm sorry if I messed it up, to do a video on this, so here you go, girl, I got you. Full disclaimer, I am not a tax professional, I am not a lawyer, I am a woman in America who is building her empire. So like I always say, empower yourself with your own information. Don't take anything you see as Bible, do your own research and make sure whatever information you're receiving works best for your situation. As always, if you like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up, share with a friend, leave me a comment, I mix those up, <laughs> hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you know when I post. With that being said, let's get into it. Oh my God. I always have a hard time navigating the Department of Revenue site for Florida. It's not as straightforward as I would like. So you're gonna go to Google and type Florida business tax license. Bam. I don't know why this is highlighting. If anyone knows how to not have that, let me know. So the first result is gonna say account management in Florida Department of Revenue, blah, blah, blah. So you're gonna click that. And you're gonna go to the second paragraph that says Florida business tax application. Yes, I've tried Googling that just to get straight to it, but it never comes up. So here we are. So it's gonna have you register. So you're gonna create a user profile and full disclaimer, so this is one, something y'all need to understand before you do this application. As soon as you register your business as an operating business in Florida, make sure you pay attention to when the sales tax are due because it's not once a year. Like I thought, I thought that and they were sending me all kinds of letters and I'm like, what are you talking about? You only file once a year. That is not true for business taxes. You file your business taxes every three months, so quarterly. So you'll have, a, they'll give you a calendar. They send you all kinds of stuff to let you know when and you can even sign up for alerts to know when you should be filing. But even if you don't collect sales tax, meaning your customers don't live in Florida, so you're not collecting sales tax on those orders, you still need to file a zero tax return, meaning you don't pay any taxes, but you're letting them know that you didn't have any customers in Florida. Like that's most cases, that's what I deal with. A lot of my customers are from Georgia, um, out of state. So I don't collect sales tax on those items on those orders but i still let the state know make sure you pay attention to when your sales tax are due it's quarterly you can either pay every month which i don't do that i just do the full every three months file a return and pay at the same time so definitely call your department of revenue they are very helpful they're there for that reason to answer any questions i call them so empower yourself with information all right so i'm gonna fill out some mock information here but basically just create your account here. Once you create your account, it's gonna have you confirm the information in your email. All right, so I'm all logged in now. And you're just gonna click start new application and your reason for applying. I don't remember what any of these says, say. Um, we're gonna say new registration or say whatever applies to you, but in most cases, it's gonna be a new registration. Um, Okay, so it'll give you the reason why. If you have not previously registered with the Florida Department of Revenue, which you most likely haven't, or if your tax account has been canceled, select this reason. Okay, so this is where you need to be sure, like don't just do this as your first thing before your business is ready to start. Make sure you're at the point where, okay, I just need to be able to collect sales tax um, and my business is starting like next week. So because whatever date you say, is gonna be the date that they base how much sales tax you owe from that date. And I didn't realize that, so I had put it in like April and my business didn't launch till like August. So technically I owed sales tax penalty fees because I missed all those times beforehand because my business wasn't running. So make sure your business is like ready to run before you do this. Um, so I'm gonna say the 13th. 
So the date of first Florida taxable activity, meaning your business is ready to run or is running. So you can put a future date or whatever. So continue. So here you're gonna put in the name of your business. Um, your, if you have a DBA business trade name, um, put that here. And you're gonna put in the telephone number. And now this is gonna be a separate point, but don't ever put any of your personal information on any business related things. So don't, don't use your personal phone number. Get a Google voice number, that's free. Um, don't use your address get a virtual address um that's very inexpensive i use regis which i probably could have gone cheaper but i didn't know but regis is a virtual office thing when they have like real offices so you can go rent a space if you want to for the day but get a virtual address protect yourself don't put any personal information out there because it can and will become public record so i'm okay with y'all seeing this my google voice number it's not my real number and fax number, I don't have no fax number. Um, business name, <laughs> we'll just pretend like it's Ebb and Flow, okay? Ebb and Flow. And the legal name of the business, from my understanding, is gonna include the LLC. So if you are L LLC, you would include the full business name with the LLC that you have on your, whatever. Is this business location open during only? Only open during a portion of the calendar year. No, we open all year, baby. So here's what I'm talking about. So you need a street address. They do not accept most business related documents won't take a PO box. They want an address. So virtual addresses, um, if you feel okay putting your home address, put it. I don't recommend doing that because people can pull up on you. Um, but virtual address would be the best bet. You could just Google and there's all kinds of different companies that do that. So um i don't remember my virtual address by off rip <laughs> so oh man hold on you guys all right so here is my physical street address or a physical business address that i have and then down here you're okay to put your p.o box or your personal to get your mailing so um i'm gonna put my p.o box i'm just gonna copy because i'm not gonna finish this application so i'll just put that and make this video faster so save and continue. Okay. So this is just saying that they just fixed the address to have this additional um, part of the postal code. All right, so business activity reporting method. Um, I just did this because you can just select retail. So we're gonna do, just leave that as the default. It's already selected for you and the business activities, depending on whatever your business is. In most cases, most of y'all are probably retail. So you're gonna search for the code because unless you know it already, you're gonna search. Industry sector is gonna be, just select whatever applies to you, but I'm gonna say retail trade because I am selling clothing. The industry is clothing and accessories. And then I'm a women's clothing store. And then select that again. So we're gonna add that, save. And then if you do anything else, add that, but do whatever applies to you. So the next step, select your form of business ownership. I'm an LLC, but you will put whatever you are or whatever you filed as. Most cases, if you have filed as an LLC, put that. Um, or if you haven't filed, or if you, in Florida, you don't have to file as a sole proprietorship, from my understanding, okay? <laughs> So if you haven't filed in Florida, you could just say you're a sole proprietor, but LLC is what I am. Membership type, single member, unless you have multiple people on your, whenever you did your LLC application, if you put multiple people as owners or part owners of the business, in my case, I did it. So I'm a single member. And then single member type. I really don't remember what I put for this. I don't think I put either one of these, I think disregarded. And then realistically, I'll put my social security, which obviously I'm gonna cut the camera for this part. <laughs> All right, so business officer, if you are a single member or whoever is in your organization, you're gonna put their information, so their name, um, last for their social, telephone, again, put your business number, um, 
I'm pretty sure I put my business address on the original application. So it's already saved there. So I can add that. And then you're gonna, whenever you finish all that, make sure you click add officer in the low right corner. And I forgot to add the title. So it's CEO, hair flip. So you're gonna add that. Or you can put slash founder. I think I put that on some of mine too. Operation or organization. This is gonna be when you filed your LLC. So on your LLC paperwork, it's gonna say, or is it asked you when is your business, when did this record take effect or whatever. Um, and you put the date of that. So my business was way back when, but just for, without me having to think about that, <laughs> I'm gonna put today's date, save and continue. Has your business ever been known by another name? Nope. Was this business, was that business? Okay, so that, if you put no, both of these would be no. Now, you're gonna detail your activities. So, in my case, I sell products to, at retail. Um, at some point, I would love to sell products at wholesale, but that is not gonna apply. But if you do sell wholesale, like say you are a lip gloss brand and you're selling um, wholesale products, then you would definitely check that box. Um, sell products or goods from non-permanent locations, such as flea markets or craft shows. Check that if you do that. If you do that, sell products or goods by mail using catalogs on the internet. That's what I also do. Sell, serve, or prepare food products. If that applies to you, definitely put that. Repair, alter consumer products or equipment. That's not gonna really apply to most of y'all unless you are like a repair shop or something. Rent equipment or other property. That's also not gonna apply unless it does. Charge admissions or membership fees. Um, I'm wondering if that applies if you do have like a, I don't know, we're gonna ignore that. Or none of the above, which that's most likely not gonna be something y'all check. So save and continue. And this is probably gonna be none of the above, but this is about renting or leasing commercial property, which I don't do. So um, let me check through these. Unless y'all do these, you really were gonna put none of the above. If you're a boutique, you're most likely gonna be able to put none of the above. All right, so for each of the business activities, select all that apply to this location. So I sell products at retail. I don't improve real property as a contractor. I don't construct anything. And then I purchase products or supplies from vendors located outside of Florida. I do, but don't get tricked up on this. It's dealing with like property. So like construction and stuff. Um, for each of the following, they ask you a lot of questions, just so y'all know. So I don't do any of these things. So this is pest control, cleaning services, detective services. You don't, if you are a boutique or a retail store, you're not doing any of these things. So none of the above, but just read through it just in case. And then again, this is dealing with gasoline and diesel, none of the above, but read through it just in case, you never know. All right, so this one is gonna apply to some of y'all if you do have like a consignment type of store. So if you do purchase, consign, trade, or sell secondhand goods, that will be you. Um, but otherwise, for me, I don't, so none of the above. Um, and then none of the above for this as well, coin-operated amusement machines. So if you have an amusement machine, which I don't, so none of the above. They ask you a ton of questions, oh my God. Place and operate vending machines at locations. I don't do this right now, but look, we'll just wait for it. So none of the above for this business. And for each of the select all, so purchase items to use my business without paying Florida sales tax to the seller at the time of purchase, which this, I do do that because I, most vendors, for clothing boutiques are located in California. So they're not charging sales tax because I'm out of the state of California. So double check this for yourself, but this is gonna apply to me. Okay, somebody is tearing up somebody's doorbell right now, wow. Um, do you sell prepaid phones? No. Do you sell tires? No. <laughs> 
Do you sell batteries? No. Do you rent, lease, or sell car sharing membership services? No. Like Uber or things like that. Oh, I said no. I said no. Okay. Now, do you own or operate a dry cleaning plant? No. Do you have or will you have employees in Florida? Yes. So if you plan on hiring somebody at some point, just check yes for this. Um, do you or will you lease workers from an employee leasing company? Probably not, but yeah. So this is mainly if you plan to hire somebody eventually, you don't have to have anyone now, but go ahead and check it now. Um, do you use the services of persons in Florida whom you consider to be self-employed, independent contractors other than those engaged? Okay, so this would be yes. So if you hire, wait, do you use the services of persons in Florida whom you consider to be self-employed? Okay, so I think this applies to now. So if you aren't doing this right now, say no. Double check with the Department of Revenue on that, but I'm pretty sure I said no on that because I don't currently have any employees and I need some bad eventually. So this is gonna be your F-E-I-N. So this is also free to apply for. If you haven't done that, just Google F-E-I-N, you get it. You apply for it and you get it as soon as you finish the application and it takes like five minutes. So uh, I'm gonna find mine and add that, add that here. Okay, I just put a bunch of zeros because it let me bypass that. So <clears throat> is this, is your business registered for reemployment? tax um no because i don't have any employees but if you do you should be registered for that um and then you're gonna put the date did you or will you have your first employee in florida so i don't know where my employee is going to come from so i'm not gonna i didn't fill that out i'm not gonna fill that out so if you don't have employees in florida or if you don't have any employees at all just don't worry about that oh my god okay i'm gonna have an employee tomorrow apparently okay so select your employer type. So you're gonna be a regular employer unless you are a nonprofit, Indian tribe, agricultural, any of that stuff. Have you or will you ever pay, or will you pay gross wages of at least 1500? So this is all based on um, what we put as we'll have employees eventually. This is gonna be based on whatever that question was that we answered before where it asked if we'll ever have employees in Florida. Um, so will you ever pay gross, gross wages of at least 1500 within a calendar year, calendar quarter? So like I said, every three months, most likely yes. Date you reach or will reach 1500 gross wages. I don't freaking know, man. Okay. So pay attention to this if this applies to you. Um, have you or will you have one or more employees for a day or portion of a day? during 20 or more weeks, most likely if you're hiring an assistant or anyone that's gonna work with you, not someone that you hired for one time, like graphic designer or anything like that, like someone who is an employee, who works with you almost every day or multiple days a week, that's gonna be, this is gonna apply to you. So this would be yes, uh, I don't freaking know, man. And then the last day of the 20th week would be the last day of that week. So continue. And then you're gonna just put the address, list of Florida locations where you have employees. So it would be this address, my business address. Um, and then I would have one, it's like manifesting. And then I would say she's my assistant. Select your service type, administrative. So if it is an assistant, in, in my example, it would be an administrative role. Cool. Do you use a payroll agent such as an accountant or bookkeeper or firm that will maintain your payroll information? I don't, but I really should. But if you do, put yes. Where would you like information mailed to? So I'll say my business mailing address, and that's my business mailing address. And where would you like to receive correspondence about tax rate notices? So on my original application, hold on, let me show y'all. So on my original application, I put my personal address or I think I put my PO box as my mailing address. So I recommend doing that um, just to make it easier on yourself to get the information because I wouldn't have known that I was getting penalties if I didn't, if I had my business mailing address 
receiving my mail because it's in Orlando. So I try to avoid going out there as much as possible, but get set up your business mailing ad or set up your mailing address as whatever is gonna be most convenient for you. So that's my tidbit on that. So I'm gonna say business mailing address again. Um, where would you like to receive correspondence about benefits paid? That would be my business address again. Do you sell communication services? No. So this will be if you have a, a if you're like Verizon, pretty much. So the answer would be no for most of y'all. Are you applying for a direct pay permit? No, again, because that relates to the previous question. Do you enter into written ob obligations to pay money with customers? No. So if you're doing like payday loans and stuff like that, which most of y'all aren't doing that. Um, do you own or operate an electric or natural or manufacture gas utility? No, unless you do. Do you import natural or manufacture gas? No. Do you extract oil, gas, sulfur? Most likely no for most, if not all of y'all. Do you wish to file returns or pay tax electronically? I would say yes on this. It makes it super convenient to go in here and not have to mail anything. So select, and you're gonna say yes on that if you wanna do that electronically. Select enrollment method, enroll for both filing returns and paying tax electronically. So you're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do, I think I said credit on my original. It'll tell you what it is. Okay, so I think I did e-check. So basically it's gonna connect my bank account. My business bank account gets connected and then it's gonna pull the money directly out of that whenever I do my taxes. So save and continue. And then this is where you're gonna put all your information about, you're gonna put your information most likely. So put in that information. And when it comes to the contact relationship to the company, I am an employee. Um, unless you do have someone who is going to be preparing your taxes on a regular basis or a payroll agent, you would select those and then put their information. So company employee, and then this page is going to ask again for whoever's going to be filing the return. Unless you have any of these things, either of these things, then you'll put that. So I'm going to put my information again and use my business address again. Oh, whoops, forgot to add that, company employee. And then this is where I would enter in my bank information. So I'm just gonna put like, it's a business account and then it's a checking. So I'm gonna put just mock numbers so we can get through this here. <laughs> it is actually a bank, oh my God. Okay, <laughs> so whenever you put your routing number, it's gonna automatically pull up the bank. And then my bank account number is 000000. zero, 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 zero. Bam. Continue. And then this is gonna be the last step, which I'm not gonna continue on because this is pretty straightforward. You're gonna just put in um, your signature, which is you, um, and then your title. If, you're, if you are the business owner, you'll put CEO, founder, whatever you wanna put. And after that, save and continue. Here, let me just make sure it doesn't like leave y'all hanging. Well, I just revealed my freaking middle name. <laughs> All right, so CEO. And then you don't have to do this um, second signature. Save and continue. Ah! And I'm scared, I don't wanna like put this in but yeah so after you get to the next page it's gonna ask you to authorize the department to send information most the rest of this stuff is straightforward it's just confirming information that kind of thing but yeah that's it once you fill this out um if my memory serves me well because COVID has messed up my memory you get a sales tax ID number right after you fill in the application like you'll get sent to you um, or they'll show you a screen of it and then also send you a letter with the information to confirm it. So yeah, that's pretty simple and straightforward. That's how you get a business tax certificate in Florida, which is also a business license. Florida doesn't do business licenses. From my understanding, it's, this is, this is your business license.
that's what it is you guys it's very simple you can do it on your phone um again like i said make sure you pay attention to when taxes are due because once you're in the system they're going to make sure they get their coin okay if you have any questions definitely reach out to your department of revenue to confirm anything and if you have a shopify store i might have to do a separate video on this but once you get this you can already collect sales tax this is just enabling you to letting florida know that you are a business in florida and you're collecting sales tax so you can already collect sales tax without having this but go ahead and get it so you can make sure you're in the system and everything's going smoothly but go to shopify under settings here we are we're about to be in shopify so once you're in shopify you're going to go into your settings where are my settings they put it so low behind low down here settings and taxes is where you're going to add in your number I actually get this question a lot. So this is gonna apply for anyone, not just Florida, for how to set this up. Um, so tax regions is where you're gonna start in this United States. And I don't know if the sales tax ID is like confidential information, but I'd rather not show that. So um, I'm collecting in Florida because my business is in Florida. You collect wherever you your business is located or registered in. So if you live in Florida and your business is registered in Florida, that's where you collect. Georgia, it will be Georgia and so on and so forth. Um, and then shipping overrides. I really don't have any of these, but let me make sure I don't steer y'all wrong. I don't really deal with any of this, to be honest. So that might be wrong of me, double check that if so. So really all you're gonna do is collect sales tax and then it's gonna ask for your sales tax ID and you would just put that in whenever you get it from the Department of Revenue or if it shows you a screen after, you can just input it there. So yeah, this is how it looks. You put in your state, Florida. Wow, I really don't know the alphabet apparently. Well, I'm already collecting in Florida, so it's not gonna be there, but we'll say Georgia just for the sake of this example and then you put in your sales tax id and then it sell, it'll tell you if you don't have it yet you can enter it later which i did i didn't have it when i first set it up but i wanted to make sure i was collecting the sales tax right away so i didn't have to go back and try to see oh my gosh like let me go back and see how much sales tax would be owed for this customer because they were in florida and they were in hillsborough county like you don't want to have to deal with that so set this up as you're setting up your store even if you don't have a sales tax id yet all right and that's it you guys very simple hopefully all right that's how you do it that's how you set up your sales tax and get the certificate and become a legal operating tax collecting business in florida again empower yourself if anything didn't make sense call your department of revenue you can ask me but they're gonna know best i'll be able to tell you what i know based on my experience and that's it so i hope this was helpful for you guys congrats to anyone who is doing this and getting serious about their business yeah, if it was helpful for you, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, share with a friend who would also find this helpful, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss another Vlogmas video. I'm doing a lot more business videos now because I've slowed down and if y'all have any other business related questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, just like Coco Suave did because yes, girl, you gave me a business video idea. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done this video. <laughs> so anyways, wishing y'all all a healthy and happy holiday season. Wishing y'all all much success in all of your businesses. I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.